I was still trying to work out what happened. So it's become a, a kind of um, a, a story, a detective fiction. Um, so because we're going to read just a section from the middle, um, I just need to explain the three characters. So the body in the car, who turns out to be the narrator, is called Anna, and she's a cabinet maker. <laughs> um, the man who's running away from the car is called Jack. He turns out to be a kind of go-between figure. And there's a woman, a Russian, young Russian woman called Vera. Um, so those are the three characters at the heart of what's becoming our story is probably not the right word because that implies some kind of outcome, but um, experiment. <laughs> so we're just going to read, um, so we've been writing alternate sonnets, advancing the plot, I suppose. Um, so we're just going to read a few of these. Um, so at the point at which we start, it's a, a flashback to how two of the characters meet each other, Jack and Vera. Look from the other end. It's spring, and Jack is late for work. He sprints down Keppel Street to hail a cab. The rucksack on his back swings out and nearly knocks her off her feet. He stops and turns to face whoever she is. Sorry, sorry, hey, are you okay? She's pale and almost pretty and in tears. And thus it starts. An ordinary day when two lives accidentally collide and what was not becomes what will have been. For, as with all beginnings, tales divide and multiply like cells, dark and unseen, until it's too late, too deep, too far now to say for certain when, or why, or how. Forget the car. Keep talking. Ask her where she's from, and can you help? Why not sit down for coffee? There's a nice bar over there, you know the one? You don't? A new in town? Some Danish pastry? Did you nice, I get to. You're not wanting to pry, just that it seems help might be needed. You don't need to know the details. You volunteer. Espresso steams and hides her face. Now there it is again. Is someone threatening you? Tell the cops. I know, I know. How did it happen then? No need to tell me. Life starts, then it stops. One conversation, follow trails, the ground, open a door, establish solid ground. Jack pays the bill. He'll never make his 10 o'clock, so why not call in sick and see what else unfolds? He has the sense again of what another might call destiny, but he still feels as freedom. Is it true? Her story, offered up in shreds between apologies and broken English. You could go to the police, he offers, keen at least to stress the gentle order he's been drifting in since childhood. Then he stops. She slammed her cup down hotly. No way, please. I learned one thing, it's never tell the cops. She softens then and moves a little nearer. Here's my number, though, if... So, I'm Vera. Move forward just a little. Let time slip between your fingers. Let the sand run down the glass. Wait for eggs to boil. We skip a week or two, move in and out of town with Jack. Vera, meanwhile, tries her best to keep her backers happy. Who are they? Backers or exploiters? Both. She's blessed for time. She panics. Then chills out. No way, she tells him. I must think. She gives the word. But where to find someone like that who can make money disappear? Who overheard of poison stashed in wood? We need a man, a proper craftsman, this and confidence. The joiner, perhaps. Don't worry, it makes sense. Jack blinks at her. Perhaps he'd mad it had in mind something a little more chivalric, or at least a quest whose answer one might find further afield than Google. What's it for, he asks. You're in antiques? She smiles. Not quite, but import, exports, sort of. You're a local, you know how to find such people, right? And you're, how do you say, a tidy bloke? Or this could make me laugh now that I view it down the backward telescope of limbo. Jack shrugs, no big deal, of course he'll do it. Well, 
he tread hot coals, just look at him. So off he goes to seek this mythic man, a rookie error, I should know, I'm Anna. I'm Anna, should you forget. I was alive and moved through solid space, like you. I spoke and you could hear me. Let's go for a drive. There's Jack, there's me. Jack is a proper bloke, likes driving. Oh, just anywhere, he says. We talk, of course, of jobs, careers and such. He's bored of his. A job is what one has to pay the bills. Beyond that, there's not much. I'm something of a puzzle to him. He looks at my hands, rough workman's hands. He notes my makeup, shoes and chest. Here are the books of my existence all laid out, the notes you need to keep. We drive on. Let him turn the wheel. I'm not ready to burn. But first, the wheels of summer have to spin. For Vera, it's a long game, so she plays Jack out, then slowly starts to reel him in. This time they leave her to it. Ivan says, there's been a hold up with the merchandise, which suits her fine, she thinks. Just play it slow and have some bloody fun for once. Besides, this Jack, she starts to rather like him, so she doesn't ask for details. 